or special favor that which it places in the limelight, the only scene which it considers to be an event, the moment of exchange, the immediate, the sensational, the real time, which for our culture is the only time that is alive. This moment in which accumulated that time is realized, one can call obscene. In the 1990s, systems had been installed allow information to be invoiced per bit, a matter of complete indifference, whether the information is text, images or sounds, the bit as a relatively small techno unit has become a new abstract currency, one of various competing currencies, the basic coinage for an economy of text, image, sound production and other windy values. I call them windy values since I discovered this wonderful atlas from the 18th century from Holland, which was made after the first big crash uh, at the European stock market uh, in the Netherlands, and who, which coined this wonderful term of traders with winds for these guys who are doing this kind of jobs and the very interesting uh, connection uh, the Atlas did was that they also called traders of winds those who were constructing images and texts for example, images which they threw uh, at the wall like wind. We should not tolerate either one of these kinds of expropriation of the so very valuable moment Neither that of the cultural industry with its obscene concentration of life's time in the staged and celebrated sensation, nor the installation of a universal measure of time and economy that assaults or runs over the capabilities of our own proper faculty of perception. The intelligent and sensitive interplay of all three conceptions of time can preserve us from alienation, from bitter melancholy, depression, as well as from paranoia, the two extreme pathologies we have mentioned already, time perception. To give the auspicious moment a charge from an Aeonian battery and or challenge chronic time's power of disposal over life by applying both Ion and Kairos tactics, to me this appears to be a possibility whereby we may survive in dignity with and within the time machines. The relationship of technical processes vis-à-vis -vis time can be described thus. Even the variables that influence the technical process from the outset, observation, inspection, control, are time dependent. In the course of the technical process they undergo conversion. At the starting point of any and every machine, machine or human machine system we find time dependent experiment. Ex experiential variables. Such processes may also be termed dynamic, and often they are. As intellectuals or as artists, the very least we can do is to ensure that the conversion which takes place mid-process makes a sharp and qualitative distinction between the variables which are effective from the beginning and the end results. If we fail with that, we fail with everything we are there for. This means to, more, to work effectively at the interface to dramatize it. Processed design time has to be able to give us back time that life has taken from us. One of the most beautiful ideas from Jolie Godard's work on the cinema. Otherwise it is time wasted, time lost. We should not allow ourselves time and time again to fall short of the capabilities of machines then we also do not need to feel ashamed in front of machines. In 1934, Max Borkheimer published his notes on Germany, a beautiful small book, which as far as I know never has been translated, under the pseudonym Heinrich Regius. He calls them Twilight in the title, these notes. In a small section with the heading Time is Money, he remarks, if one shrinks from falling into the generalizations of common platitudes, 
then time is not money, but money is time, of course, as well as health, happiness, love, intelligence, honor, peace. For it is a lie that if you have time, you also have money. With mere time, you don't get any money, but vice versa is certainly true. 1934, Max Horkheimer. We wander around in circles in the night and are consumed by fire. Many of us grew up with this phrase by Guy Debord, who described his situation as a professional situationist, the movement of roaming about, which was the title of the last film he made before his last will, and Testament. The first known timepieces from ancient China were rectangular metal reliefs structured like labyrinths. In the depressions, a slowly igniting powder was strewn and the burning of the powder showed the passage of time. Idebor offered his body and his imagination for measuring the time in which he lived. Yet, what could be a viable alternative of action to the situationist one, which consumes its own identity? Naturally and theoretically, to be fire instead of burning powder. We are all, or many of us, are trying to do that. However, to take up this position is not an option for us, for we are, amongst other things, of the very stuff, as I said at the beginning, that time uses up unless we want to play God. What we can do is to intervene in the rhythm and velocity of the burning put in stops and organize the intervals in between. The superior time policy means to fight for the upper hand in time consumption and time use, or to give up this autonomy completely by multiplying and accelerating radically your individual existence. It's very difficult, but some people, especially in our scene, are able to live that. It appears that one must be ready to face certain loss, both in the sense of self-consuming, Guy Debord, and self-squandering, Georges Bataille. However, then, if we do it like that, loss is not a category of fatal economy. If we succeed in making it an enrichment of others in a grand way, otherwise the act of consuming would be religious and the act of squandering ideological, but both have had devastating effects in the recent past, for which Germany stands as an example. If it is so, that under the ages of expanded so-called interactivity at the interface of media people and media machines, creativity, individuality, even singularity, have become fundamental social competences. And although the traditional model of the artist in art is now a discon discontinued line, it appears to be becoming a general central model for social action. Then it, it, then it is appropriate to work on at least complementary identities. The competencies that will be required increasingly of intellectuals and artists are already clearly tangible, but as yet not translatable, and this is, I think, absolutely okay like that, into concrete strategies and tactics. Chaos pilots and Kairos poets, people who are not only capable of dealing with confusing arrangements, but also are able to organize exciting labyrinthical structures for them and those who catch the auspicious moment and charge it with energy. Without a relationship, of course, to complexity and without a relationship to time, both are inextricably bound up with each other. I cannot imagine that advanced practices in art and thought are possible. And I think I jump to the end. For paleontologists, 